children does not have to experience the bitterness Absolutely. that we are feeling. And Absolutely. we are going to act civil. Good morning. Good morning, sweetheart. And how are you this morning? I am good. Wonderful. Wonderful. I am just happy. <laughs> I am just so happy this morning. I'm sorry. We took funny pills this morning. This is gospel in the real. You're not going to get anything fake, phony. We are giggle boxes this morning. So, but it's good to, to, yes, to wake up happy is. in the Lord. It is. It is. This is the joy of the Lord. Absolutely. We're, we're, we're not able to contain ourselves too much. So just be with us today. <laughs> That's it. You know, um, last week when we were talking, um, we were talking about a very serious matter that I believe so many people go through but sometimes they don't know how to get through it productively. That's right. That's right. And we were talking about uh, after marriage. Yes. After marriage. Yes. And how you deal with it and deal with it with the kids. Mm -hmm. So, you know, your kids don't come out scarred from this because um, the purpose of, of this discussion is is to impart a little bit of uh, things we can use tools we can use as uh, people that have not you know have separated or divorced mm -hmm. um, in regards to the children always be civil yes we have to learn to be civil because the situation when there are children involved it's a very delicate thing because their lives are still in our hand you know mm -hmm. we are the ones that are still going to help them to grow and mature and be the best they can be. So if we act the fool, then our children are going to be confused and more hurt mm -hmm. than they need to be. Mm -hmm. And it does not have to be that way. Mm -hmm. I am again going to use my own references because I'm talking from experience. Absolutely. I'm not just talking because I read a book. I'm mm -hmm. talking about something I went through mm -hmm. and I feel looking at other couples divorcing and some of the outcome, the wars, the, mm -hmm. the frustrations, the bitterness, and the children experience that while the parents mm -hmm. doing it. And I, I was just speaking about it earlier to someone else. The fact is, when I first got divorced during my first marriage, at first I was scared of my husband mm -hmm. because, you know, he promised me, mm -hmm. our children does not have to experience the bitterness Absolutely. that we are feeling. And Absolutely. we are going to act civil because of that, we are never going to allow them to feel or hurt. Absolutely. They're always going to know they have a mom and a dad, and they're going to be there for them. So whatever happens between us, we can do it behind them. Mm -hmm. But when they're around us, we're going to smile and we're going to be real good mm -hmm. and allow the kids to be comfortable. And I think a lot of marriages need to do that. Breakups Absolutely. need to do that, you know, because it helps the children it does um i am a product mm -hmm. of um teenage parents mm -hmm. who thought they would spend the rest of their lives together my mom had my brother when she was 16 and she had me when she was about 17 18 and they were uh divorced by 20. There you go. <laughs> and teenage parents smart enough to know that these children still has to grow up. That's right. Regardless of our differences, regardless of our misunderstandings, yeah. they still have to grow up because they have to keep living. Yeah. And one of the things that I applaud my my parents as well as my bonus parents because I don't believe in step. Mm -hmm. My bonus parents and my parents at a very young age, they got along. My dad moved around the corner from us. Yep. My bonus dad would come home from work, mm -hmm. walk in the house two o'clock in the morning because we were night owls mm -hmm. in our home mm -hmm. and we're all laughing and joking with my dad and we're watching TV and my mom has on a nice, what is it, those terry cloth mm -hmm. robes mm -hmm. and he would walk in the door and say, what's up Charlie? Mm -hmm. I can't stay up with y'all tonight. I'm going to sleep. Yeah. That is the he. They call each other husband-in-laws. Mm -hmm. They still. I'm 39 years old, and my bonus dad came into my life when I was around three or four, mm -hmm. and they still ride their motorcycles together. My mom and my 
first bonus mom, because my dad did remarry, yeah. she treated my brother and I like we were her children. Yes. I never heard her talk about my mom. I never heard her tell my dad he couldn't stay over to our house or come over or whatever. It was such an unusual situation that people used to look at them because my dad would be at my bonus dad family reunion. Yeah. And my sisters would look at my mom like a mom, my sisters from my dad. Yes. And they would look at us like, it's something weird about this. Yeah. But it was something so healthy about it. Because I may not have all of the tools in life in every area, mm -hmm. but that's one thing I got down pat. Right. Kids come first. That's right. We are not a part of adult screw-ups. No. We come first as children, and that is one of the things that my parents did for me. It is the most important thing and I think we can talk this I think we have so much in common mm -hmm. and the more you talk the more I'm going yes because I actually went just just like that that's the way it was and it made life easy mm -hmm. I wasn't afraid to be around my parents with mm -hmm. other bonus parents mm -hmm. and I was happy mm -hmm. I, I, I still it my real mother is now a uh, past mm -hmm. but my Bonus mother mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> is still alive. Mm. She comes here and it's as if mom is home. Wow. And we just enjoy each other. And wow. it's always been that way since I was a little girl, maybe maybe seven, eight was when my dad married mm -hmm. her. And she's always been my bonus mom. And my dad was always in and out of my mom and mm -hmm. my bonus dad's life mm -hmm. and we just got along well yeah and there was no wars that's it it was no wars there were a lot of misunderstandings there were a lot of things that they had to come to the table and talk about but my mom always told my brother and I I don't care if he was a drunk under the bridge yeah. He's your dad. Yeah. You will respect him as your dad. Yes. And I will always push you towards having yeah. a positive relationship with him. Yeah. Same thing with my dad. We would call, of course, and try to talk about my mm -hmm. mom. She won't let us blah, 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 blah. And, 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 and Kenny, which is my bonus dad, he blah, 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 blah. And you know what the conversation would be like? If you don't blah, 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 yeah. I am going to blah, blah, blah. I'm like, dang, they, they just, they attack us. They were together. They were together. They, they were, were on together. the same page. Yes. And I appreciate it yes. so much. Yes. It, it took a lot of drama out of my life. A lot of drama. And the kids don't need drama. No. I mean, they have enough drama with school. Mm -hmm. When you think about it, mm -hmm. our kids going to, even going to school at the time I went, I didn't have all the drama they mm -hmm. have now. Mm -hmm. And now these kids, you know, coming up with parents separating mm -hmm. and going to war at each other, it doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. It leads to heads that are thinking, not about themselves. Mm -hmm. We've messed up. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what I said. We've messed yes. up. Yeah. And our kids had nothing to do with it. Nothing. First of all, they didn't ask us to be born. Mm -mm. So we brought them here. Now it's our duty to make it right make it for right them. for them mm -hmm. so they can be happy the most important thing is their happiness yeah. and them coming out whole that's right i'm whole because my parents were whole absolutely you know i saw mom i saw dad i saw bonus mom mm -hmm. and dad and absolutely. we laughed and talked we could come together at christmas time you know we ate we, we just what a big family the point is our relationship didn't work Mm -hmm. Can we think about it that way? Mm -hmm. And I think if people think about it, yes. we just couldn't make it work. No. We tried, it didn't work. No. Okay? So we're going to move on. You're marrying somebody else, I'm marrying someone else. Why can't we still be that family that can correspond and talk and laugh? Absolutely. And our children can come and go and, you know, I have a mom. In fact, I have two moms. Mm -hmm. In fact, I have two dads. Mm -hmm. It happened. It's, it, it's a healthy part of separation. Yeah. It's a productive aspect of we can't be together, but our children still have to live. We're always going to be their parents, so let's be the best. If the enemy mm -hmm. got us caught up to the point that we could not continue with our covenant yeah. for whatever reason, that was my mindset. 
if the covenant was broken for whatever reason and the enemy thought he won, I believe when the Bible says what the enemy meant for evil, God will work out for your good. Because maybe we can't be that husband and wife, but we can be the best darn parents. That's right. We can be the best darn parents that we can be for our children and it would be as if we were still married that's right because now you know how to help the kids mm -hmm. our kids need to we were talking earlier last in early episode about the training of yes. the children helping them to be mm -hmm. themselves mm -hmm. you know because today they're trying to be everything by Absolutely. themselves and i've got to look this way i've got to be this mm -hmm. way no you can be yourself yes and if the, the children have a foundation right that mm -hmm. is secure yes and that's what the bible says train up the child in the way that they should go when they're old and won't depart now if we, we can do this because we didn't depart from that Foundation, that foundation in our own lives Absolutely. we understood it might work it, we went and got married and mm -hmm. didn't mm -hmm. work uh, mm -hmm. but we have children mm -hmm. and we want our children to be strong women mm -hmm. and to be able to live life and Absolutely. deal with life beyond me Absolutely, right? because I'm not always going to be here but if I give them a foundation mm -hmm. they can now go on and live lives and be Good parents. Absolutely. That you don't. They and your children. The thing is, they look at us. Mm -hmm. I am to be an example. The Bible say for my children. Mm -hmm. If they see me acting all crazy and acting all wild and you know can't put it together, what is going to happen to them? They're so, going to mimic that. Yeah. Even if they don't mimic it because they're not ready for a relationship, but they're going to mimic it with a teacher. They're going to mimic it with a stranger. They're going to mimic it in church. They're going to mimic it with any type of authority that does not bend the rule for them because they're mimicking your responses. Yes. Yes. That's exact. I, I see it all the time working with young people. They come in that classroom and they're, they come in our meeting places. They're bitter, they're angry, they're broken. And I guarantee you, if I ask them, are your parents still together? More than likely, they will say no and they fight like cats and dogs. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I have to choose. And I feel like if I say something nice about my dad, my mom is going to jump yes. down my throat. And if I yes. say something nice about my mom, my dad is going to jump down my throat. And we pull these kids and we break them into pieces because we are selfish individuals. That's right. Leave it between you and he or you and she. Yeah. Is that person going to be perfect? Are you going to get along? Because I do know that there are some certain situations that no matter how mature you are and how bad you want that, that blended family to work, there's always ignorance that creeps its way in, yes. but you don't have to entertain it. Yes, you don't. You don't have to entertain it. I know I have an aunt. And um, I used to always hear her tell uh, my cousins how you feel about your dad, you'll express it when you're older. But when you're around me, you're going to express nothing but love, respect, and appreciation. Now, I, she knew there were some, some, some bad spots. She knew that there were some wrong decisions. She knew that he wasn't being the dad that he needed to be. But she would never allow them to voice disrespect towards their dad. Now they're older, they had to mend some things with their dad because he wasn't the best dad, but it was up to them when they got older. In, in, in the position as a child, it is not your position to voice disrespect to your parents. It is not. It is not. But if the parent mm -hmm. allows a child to do it by not telling them, you cannot. Mm -hmm. speak, I mean, when I, I, I could, you must say, I keep saying, when I, mm -hmm. I could not speak to anyone mm -hmm. that was one year mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> older than me mm -hmm. out of place. Yeah. You know, it would always be miss or mister or mm -hmm. in, in the island, everybody was your aunt. I know that's right. <laughs> I believe Everybody it. was your uncle. Mm -hmm. You know, it was just a way of showing respect. Mm -hmm. And so... You would always have to show respect. And I believe that it, it caused me to be a better person. Mm -hmm. You know, I hate the gruff attitude that our kids 
a growing up in because mm -hmm. parents, you know, mm -hmm. I don't have time and mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it's always just so disrespectful. Yeah. So we as parents, again, we have to model what we want our children to be. Absolutely. We have to model it. If they go off later on and decide to go down the wrong road, well, that's their prerogative. Absolutely. You know, but I believe that the foundation that we lay is important yes. as parents and for our daughters, women, we need to look a certain way. I love what you do with CD, um, FS. FS. Yes. Thank you. I love what you do with it because I watched a couple of times when one, a couple of my grands were coming. Mm -hmm. And they would get in the car, and I'd watch them, and they'd be brushing their hair and, and straightening out their clothes. And I looked at them, and I'm like, mm, good. Mm -hmm. You know, because at home, you're trying to brush your blood. Mm -hmm. And then they're coming to the class, and they wanted to look. I watched. It was wonderful to watch them. Thank you. And it has made a change yes. in them. So these are some of the things that we need to do with our children. Yes. And continue to train them, help them to grow up and be the best woman they can be. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, this has been an awesome time. We hope that you receive something out of this. Blended families, it's not a walk in the park. It's not a run through a bed of roses, but it is what it is. And if we're going to bring up our children in the way that they should go. If we're going to bring up whole children, as Pastor yes. Bryant said. If we're going to bring up whole children, we have to be whole. And the only way we can truly be whole is, is forgiveness. Forgiveness makes us whole. It doesn't release that person from their assignment, their obligation, or being accountable, but it makes us whole. And it brings a joy upon us that no situation can take away because we're whole through forgiveness in Christ Jesus. See you next week. See you next week. Gospel in the real.